Hello everyone and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Yes, you know, we're talking about Sebastian Rogers. Well, we are, and we're not. We're talking more about who's going to talk. Right, yesterday we did one where we're talking about the FBI and the 50,000 and all that lot and everything. Well, now I got thinking, that's a lot of money. So who's going to talk? Who have they spoken to? You know what I mean? Has Katie spoken to anyone? I doubt it. But you don't know. Has Chris spoken to anyone? And what about this so-called Uncle Taco? I think that's his name. The one who used to play video games with Sebastian and Seth online. What about him? Where is he? Has he been checked out? How do we know? Like last night I was talking about perhaps it could have been a planned ad abduction. By Sebastian. Could he have been talking to someone online while his dad's being at work? Right? Shush up and go and get your dinner. It's in the kitchen. Go. Right? Could he have been talking to someone online and they've said, like last time, Uncle Taco said he spoke to Sebastian and Seth, well, don't know if he spoke to him, but he said he played a game with him. <coughs> <coughs> it was two weeks before he went missing. Wow. Well, two weeks before he went missing? That would have been his mother's weekend. A week before he went missing was his father's weekend. They all said that weekend he went missing was his weekend with his mum. So the weekend before would have been his father's and two weeks before that would have been his mother's. So how could they be playing game two weeks before he went missing? Now, I'm sure the law, the law is on to this. I'm sure I hope to God. Some some of the county sheriff's offices thinking about all this has heard all this about Uncle Taco playing video games with Sebastian and whatever two weeks before he went missing and then the little brain cells working like ours does and thinking Oh darn two weeks before he went missing he was at his mum's so how could he have been talking to Sebastian? Huh? The week end before he went miss the week before he went missing, which would have been oh dark, I'm gonna find out for you. Let me get my phone. Let me pull my calendar. Right. So let's get back to February. So he went missing on the 26th. It was, well, it was reported missing on the 26th. And so the last time his dad would have seen him, even though he did say he spoke to him on the Friday, I think he said he spoke to him on the Friday, the last time his dad would have seen him would have been this, um, the 16th. Well, he would have picked him up on the 16th after school and had him 16th, 17th and brought him back on the 18th. The week before that was the 10th. The week before that was the 10th. And that was the weekend he would have been at his mum's. So two weeks before he went missing, he could not have been playing online 
with Uncle Taco. I think I think that's what they call him. I know it's some strange name. Right? So have they checked him out? Right? Does he know anything? Could he be could he open his mouth up and say something? Because fifty thousand times are hard. Fifty thousand is a lot of money. And that is a lot of money from the FBI. Because I've heard a lot of people saying this. They know they know people the FBI do put rewards out. Elijah Vu, they put a fifteen thousand pound reward up. Altogether, what with Crime Stoppers putting fifteen thousand, FBI putting fifteen thousand, then Sumner County, um not Sumner County, um Two Rivers Police Department raised ten thousand through donations that the people was donating to, right? That got the reward up to forty thousand. But that took three donations, right? Three donations. This is fifty thousand in one donation. So you imagine what if Crime Stoppers put so much to it as well? Because they can. Why well, they put like ten thousand? There's sixty thousand, or even five thousand. There's another fifty-five. There's be fifty-five thousand. Money talks. So has Seth like has Seth said anything about Katie? His thoughts and what could have happened about it about Katie or Chris too? Do do do. Tony Mathis. And we all know what TikTok Tony's like. TikTok Tony's. Like it's up to Seth who he has helping him. But we don't have to like him. Right? But TikTok Tony is is a fraud. It's a fraud. He don't know anything about being a what was it? Um, a representative or I don't know. Someone who helps out with the news people and interviews and all that lot. He doesn't know nothing about that. He was helping Caleb, Caleb Harris, was he? Was that his name? His father. And that was only because his, them two used to work together. And he said, look, if I can help in any way, help you with your interviews, getting, helping you set the interviews up, taking some of the pressure off you, I will. And that's what he did. But then, for some stupid reason, another YouTuber, who I do like, I won't say names, put him in touch with Seth. And Seth, and Tony got together and everyone was saying it. They all said it. Oh my God, TikTok Tony, this is going to go down this shithole. And it did. It went downhill. Because you, so, you talk about, people talk about us YouTubers spreading malicious rumours and all this lot. Tony did the same. He was putting information out there that he had invented. He's putting information out there that was untrue, was malicious, was everything. Right? So, has Seth been said anything to Tony, maybe, what his thoughts are with Katie? Because I tell you now, the FBI work in funny ways. They work in funny ways. They get people to go again. You, if you, like, if you've got someone who the FBI want, and you're in touch, and you're in connection with that person, right, and you're willing, the FBI will have you working for them. They will pay you, and they'll have you working for them, right? 
So has Seth said anything to Tony about anything? Has Seth spoken to Tony about this child services report, which he shouldn't have? He should not spoke to Tony about it if he has. Because Tony's not supposed to know nothing. No one's supposed to know anything. That was for the eyes and eyes only of Seth, no one else. So I hope Seth hasn't given him any information on that. We know whatever it is, it isn't good because child services don't come to your house for no reason. Come to the house for no reason. They really don't. Uh, but they slipped up here. They slipped up with Sebastian. Oh, what a surprising ever one child services has slipped up with. So, and then we got Chris. You mean know how Chris likes to talk? Oh, yes. But has he spoken to anyone? Has he said anything? We've got his mum. We've got his dad. $50,000 is a lot of money. And that's why I think FBI have put this out, put that much in. It's like just 15,000, or even 20,000. They made it big because the FBI want answers. We've been asking now for the FBI to step in. We've been asking for the FBI to take over. Well, they've not, literally, they haven't took over, but they're not messing about no more. They want answers. They know people won't talk to TBI. They know certain people won't talk to Sumner County. So they're hoping that now they will talk to them. People trust the FBI. They don't trust some of your county. And TBI, well, they've got a track record, haven't they? Of not finding, if they've got a complex case, they've got a track record of not, deal, not being able to deal with it properly. They said Summer Moon, Summer Wells is a complex case. And look where she is. Or where still missing. They've said Sebastian is a complex case. Oh look, he's still missing. TBI cannot handle complex cases. Give it a rest. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Go and get your dinner. It's in the kitchen. Go on. Oh god. Just gotta get my cap on my lap. Come on then. Come on, if you're gonna be quiet. Come on then. Oh, don't come up then. Right, so I'm just wondering who who will talk. Do you think the neighbours will start talking? We've only had the one neighbour. Well, we've had a couple of neighbours come out and say something, but I've not really believed those neighbours. Uh, you know what I mean? Like with the mattress and all this lot. So that I don't, I don't know. I find that hard to believe. However, so, let's think, you got Chris who's the gobby one, you got got Katie who's gone mute, why we don't know, that's her choice, she don't have to talk, she doesn't have to talk, she's not been charged with anything, so she, she definitely doesn't have to talk, I swear to God these cats, get out of here now, if you're going to moan, go, go on. Stop it. If you want to stay here, you've got to be quiet. Ah. Come on, my lap thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's it. Right, so you've got Katie who's gone quiet. And I know why she's gone quiet because whenever she spoke, people was just picking her, her words apart. But we would like to hear from Katie herself, because at the end of the day, I don't care what anyone says. Right? At the end of the day, she was the last one to see Sebastian and the last one to speak to Sebastian. 
Now, on that new, where is it? Uh, I'll see if I can go up. Who's coming to my comment? Karen, I haven't seen you for a while. How are you? Tony M and CP are, cahoot, are in cahoots, in my opinion. Yeah, but do you think, see, Tony M. Oh, sorry. I read that one. I was thinking, Seth thing. Tony Matthews, Tony M and CP. Do you think they are? Do you think Tony's got some info on CP? Oh, give it a rest. Don't be quiet. I'm going to kick you out of here. Go. Go then. Go and get your dinner. You moan when I don't feed, feed you early enough. And now I've fed you, you're still moaning. I've fed them tonight and I've sat there by the kitchen door looking at me in disgust. I'm thinking, it's your fucking food. It's a meaty food. It's not the fish you want. It's a meaty one. You got your dry food, you got your walkie, you got your meaty fishy food. Eat it. And they just sat there looking at me, giving me dirty looks. So I thought I'll leave it then. Because if if you haven't ate it by in the morning, I'll bing it. Because it goes dry and horrible. So I'll bing it. Anyway. So Karen reckons Tony M and C P are in cahoots. But do you think Tony's Tony's got information on CP? Do you think Tony would talk? Yes, I had to buggy up with Seth to smear Seth's reputation. Tony sells cranes. But I thought it was um another YouTuber that put Tony and Seth in contact with each other. You know what I mean? But it wouldn't surprise me, Karen. It wouldn't surprise me. Nothing surprises me nowadays in anything. Because I know Seth didn't do it. But you see, they can't clear him. They can't, they won't officially come out and say, Seth is not involved. Because if they do that, they've got to come out and say, Katie and Chris weren't involved. You know what I mean? Because if they don't, they've got everyone and me and all the YouTubers go, oh my God, they've cleared Seth, but they haven't cleared Katie or Sick or Chris. So all the attention would be back on them. And they've been very quiet over the summer holidays. I'm wondering, uh, I don't know if the schools have gone back yet in, in America. I know they are in the in the UK, well, in Scotland, they have. I think they've got another week or so. I think they've got another week or so in England, but in Scotland, they've gone back. Why? Right. The little bleeders have all gone back to school. <laughs> anyway, so $50,000 is a lot of money, Karen. A lot of money. If, if I knew, if I, if something like that happened here, right? And someone told me something, I said, but don't tell anyone. No, I won't. I must admit, I don't. True. But someone said they'd do that. Who said they did that? Oh, yeah. What was that YouTuber's name? He's, he's not very well at the moment. He's in hospital. I haven't heard anything lately about him. Um, oh, Dolly Fisher. Dolly Vision said, as soon as Chris, uh, Tony come on the scene, he said, this is going to go downhill. He's going to isolate every, uh, Seth from everyone and he's going to take over control of the whole lot, right? And he's going to become a shit show. And that's what it did. It became a shit show. Full of BS, full of uh, misinformation by uh, Tony. But I'm wondering, uh, if they say the police, law enforcement aren't working with Seth. Now, Seth is very hot-headed. 
I'll be the same. I hope I'll be the same. I really would. I'm. If someone pisses me off, and I'm not getting the answers I want or I need, I become very pissed off. Anyway, so could it be because he's got Tony on his side, right? That the police won't tell Seth nothing. I think if Seth got rid of Tony, and I don't care how much he likes him, I, I don't have to like him. I don't have to work with Tony. It's up to Chris, uh, Seth. Yes, they do, Karen. That is correct. Yes, he is gullible. Is that a weak... Is that a... Uh, is that as weak as possible point at the moment because his son is missing? And hi, M Cars, not seen you for a few for a while. Where you been? Right. So we've got all these people here, and as I said, is it? Am I right in saying that guy who used to play games on video uh, online with Seth and Sebastian was that called? Was he called Uncle Taco? Because I was just saying, he said the last time, right, well, he had any contact, was two weeks before he went missing. Well, two weeks before he went missing, Sebastian was at his mum's. The weekend before he went missing, not the, not that weekend, like, oh God, I'll pull it up again. Where is it? Uh, he went missing on the 26th, so... His mum had him that weekend, so the weekend the dad had him, the 17th and the 18th. You've been busy. Okay, I'll let you off, cars, M cars. I'm well, just a bit tired. I'm not going to be long on heating up because I wasn't going to come on heating up, but then it just, it's been bugging me all day about this $50,000 bond. I know I did your live last night. But I'm thinking, there's going to be someone out there. You're going to have these people turning on each other now. And I'm wondering, right, I've got, put the links out last night on my Everlife of the mob crew, right? Go and watch his videos. The mob crew. He's been doing some brilliant work on this, on that information of the lit lights. Right? And you know Seth said, and it's something else I never someone else said, I heard someone say. You know as Seth said it was the dump the garbage truck. Right? I think and I I am I'm honest I'm with this person, I can't remember who said it. I really think they showed Seth a later time, a later part of the, that video, right? They've got all that video from that night, right? They've got it all. And they've showed Seth and Chris the footage of when the garbage trucks actually came through. Not before the footage before They've shown them the footage of the garbage trucks. And that's why Chris and Seth are both saying, it's not nothing, it's the garbage trucks. But the mob crew, he's done some brilliant work. And I now, I really do think he was abducted. He was kidnapped from his home. Either he planned it with someone, to, for them to come to his home and he, he was to leave with them or it was planned an inside job by someone else but and I think Chris, uh, Seth needs to watch those two videos those videos that mob crew has been doing he really does because something is not right.
Anyway, so, what am I going to say now? So you got Mr. Taco, weird name. At the last bike rally Sunday, the guy that organised it and was speaking with T-shirts saying, Truth Autism is supposedly an undercover cop. Seth looks confused and Tony squirm, flushing out Tony. Who's Truth Autism? Is he another YouTuber or a gamer? Truth Autism is supposedly an undercover cop. Seth, I haven't seen that video from the rally. So I'm going to have to try and find it. I think it'll be on Seth's wingy. It'll be on his YouTube channel. So I'm going to have to sit and watch that because I haven't seen that. I, the only thing I've seen was Clue Mingati, or whatever her name is. Apparently, just getting back in time to see Betty being arrested. Fun, something a bit funny about that as well. But we're not talking about Betty or anyone else like that. We're not. Because I'm not into the drama. So. So at the last bike rally, Sunday, the guy that organised it and was speaking with T-shirts saying truth. Watched allegedly innocent jewels. Her eyes were wide open. Oh, your eyes will open wide. Will Right, I've seen that come up as well, and I must admit today I've been in one of those uh, moods. I was supposed to go and do some shopping today, and I hate shopping, I really do. But I've got to go tomorrow now, I've got to go and do some shopping tomorrow. I hate having to get up. I like, I like to get up in the morning, have a wash or whatever. Brush my hair and put some fresh big PJs on, or put my ones, uh, my snooty on, right, and just chill out all day. <laughs> right, and um, today was a really chill day. Couldn't give a hoot day. Right, and I have seen these coming up, but I wasn't even interested in watching them anything today on YouTube. I really wasn't. I did do a video today, right, on Elijah Fu, I put that out, that was just an update. Yeah, I know she is, oh, she streams a vigil, okay, I'll watch that, okay, I'll watch it. Because I'm missing me on the Saturday night, it was a bit late for me to stay up to watch the vigil. Well, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't feeling too good Saturday either. So I, I, I did my live, finished my live, downloaded it onto my laptop, and then switched everything off and went to bed. I'll watch that, Karen. I will watch it. I might watch it after this thing when I finish here. However, do you think this Taco, Uncle Taco, or whatever his name is, knows something. Or not. Or do you think there's neighbours that know something and have been too... Oh, look, it's none of our business what goes on in that house, you know what I mean? Well, when it comes to a child, a missing child, it is your business. If you know something, say something. Right, I was watching something on my TV on YouTube about a woman who got shot and a young girl who got shot. Two different cases, but within a few miles of each other. And I thought, oh my lord, this is getting out of hand in the UK, it really is. Just the guy speaking. Okay, I will go and watch it, Karen. I will. I'll probably watch it after this. I might go and watch it in my bed. Put my laptop, take my laptop through to my bed. 
No, I won't do that. If I do that, I'll fall asleep. So no, I'll sit in here and I'll watch it on my laptop in here. I've got my I've got my dry roasted peanuts and my crisps. I'll be fine. <laughs> Keep myself awake with some coffee. <laughs> anyway, so who else have they spoken to? We know they've spoken to the mum and dad, his mum and dad, or our stepdad. We know that. We know they've spoken to the family members. They all know about this case. But who else knows anything? That lad, the one who gave Tony that false information, but Tony didn't get checked out. What's his name? I can't think. Does he know anything? Or did he talk? Because I know, I swear to God, I so, I'm sorry, but if someone told me, people can tell me, don't, look, I'm going to tell you something, don't tell anyone. And I don't. I will not. Unless I feel either someone's going to get hurt in it by not speaking up. So if they told me something, I thought, look, some, I've got to talk about this because someone's going to get hurt. I can't keep this quiet. Right? But if someone told me about something about a missing child, I'd be thinking, hmm, this is hearsay. That's it. Terry Lynn does. She knows something, does she? I'm not. I'm not sure like Stephen Crabtree even. Um, I think he was just in it for his fifteen minutes of fame, bump his numbers up on his on his whatever site he had TikTok or YouTube. I didn't. I didn't sign up to either of them. To either of his. So because I knew then I thought he's only in it for to get his numbers up bit like Tony. What was it he did? This is why I don't trust Tony either. Um, that other family he's working with. I can't think of their name now. I just mentioned it and I've just forgot. Right? They apparently turned around and dropped Tony. Right? And I don't blame them. I do not blame them because... Having him associated with your son's case is not going to help your son's case. So they dropped him. Like a ton of bricks. I just dropped him like 10 tons of bricks. Anyway. What was I saying then? So. He then took over the... Was it, their, was it their Instagram page or their Twitter page or something like that? I think it was their Instagram because by then the numbers, it built the numbers up. It was it was vulgar talking about BHB needing a man between the legs, so I shut him off. Who's Stephen or TikTok Tony? I swear to God. When I see that subscriber coming in here, she's a she's a youth from UK. I can't think of her name yet. I know her name and I see. She got that not TikTok Tony, but you think of Tick but with a D Tok Tony. She said that once in here. And every time I have to stop myself from saying the D and I call it Tick Tuck Tony and not the D Tuck Tony. Right? Because every time I see you now, I, I, that comes into my head straight away. Um, there's a lot been going on in this case. Um, some people may not like BHB. Right? I don't really know her that well, to not to say I don't like her. 
she hasn't done anything to harm my channel or me. So, and to be honest with you, there's a lot of people I do watch. Right? I watch a lot of YouTube channels, YouTubers. And there's Lady K and Queen B. I don't watch all their videos, but I watch a little bit of them. And I watched BHB, and at first, she was doing some good information on this case. She really was. Right? But then I'd go on to watch, and she'd be having a rant about something, someone. And then, so I switch it off. I'm thinking, I don't need that. Then I switch on again a couple of days later, she'd be having a rant again. So I stopped watching Bullone Betty. But I'll give it to her. She got arrested, right? There it is. I don't understand why she got arrested because I don't see how they can stop someone from saying a name. Right? So, just by saying Sebastian Rogers, I don't see how they can stop someone by saying that name. But at the same time, she's getting his name out there. She's getting his picture out there. And I always say, it doesn't matter if it's good publicity or bad publicity. Either way, it's getting that name and that picture of that child out there. Right? So, she goes to jail. She comes out. And then she does that protest. And people say, oh, but there's only like 10 of them there. You don't need to have 20, 30, 40, 50 or more people there. You don't. Those outside the police station, they had a nice little protest going, right? And they're getting the information out there. People's walking past, cars were going past, right? Then the FBI, someone from the FBI come up. And think about this fifty thousand dollar reward. And then she comes up at the end and she goes on about this reward. And she said to me, and then she said, Some your county, now come and arrest me. And she's outside their police station. They could have arrested her. But they didn't. Right? They didn't. So she's ballsy. I'll tell you that much. I'll give her that much. She's ballsy. Right? And I read a comment saying someone apparently the FBI said if she's got if she's got the balls to do it, then we've got to give them a reward. <laughs> I don't know if that was true. It was just a comment that came up on that short live of hers. And I thought, well, it's true. She's she's ballsy. She. She don't care. If it means getting that child's name out there, she'll do it. But they could have arrested her that day. They didn't. What I don't understand is this was supposed to be a protest to clear Seth's name. Yeah? To clear his name. Why wasn't he there? Why wasn't Seth there that day? This coffee's not nice. It's alright, I brought the wrong coffee. I brought the mild. Kenko, and I think it's a mild blend. Ugh, no. And if you... I like a bit of a coffee with a bit of a bite to it. So the stronger, the better. And... If you put too much of that coffee in, I thought, oh, I'll just put a bit extra coffee in. It makes it very bitter. So I thought, yeah, can't drink it bitter. So I've ordered Kenko. I did get a bit of shopping in. I've got the delivery. And I had Kenko, the blue one, the rich Kenko. But that's better. So I think I might have to go and make myself another coffee because that is vibe. It's like, it's like drinking warm milk but with a very, very little bit of hint of coffee taste. 
and I'm a coffee drinker. I really am. So we got all that. We got this money there. We got fifty thousand dollars sitting there. Who's going to talk? Has Chris spoke to anyone? Has he slipped up? And said, has Katie slipped up and spoke to someone about it and not realised that she's what she's saying could come back on her? You know what I mean? Like a neighbour, a friend. It could be a friend. I'm telling you, your friends will snitch on you for fifty thousand dollars in this time when. You got the cost of living and the prices are going up, but nothing's coming down. Right? Your right wages aren't going up, but the bills are all going up. The cost of shopping is going up. The cost of fuel is going up. Chloe, the PI, should have had BHP ducks to get a PO on CP when you threaten your life to Heather. Yes. Yes. She should have. He may get wet towards her. She should have. I'm sorry. She should have. But she didn't. Why? Because she didn't want to upset the apple cart. What apple cart? That apple cart has been turned over ten times already, love. So turning it up and down again is not going to hurt. She should have it then. Right? The only mistake I think BHB did that time she was down there when she's putting them flies up. The only mistake I seen her do, and I thought, don't get out your car. Do not get out. I'm sitting there thinking, don't go out your car, Betty. Do not get out your car. And what does she do? Because she sees him pull up behind her car, then pull away. She follows him. Right? Now, who's following who? She's following him. So I'm thinking, don't get out your car, Betty. Do not get out the car. She does. And goes up to him. And in a way, it's right what he said. He said, who's following who? You're following me. I'm not following you. You're behind me. Which is true. Right. And I think that was a mistake she made. She should have, If she's going to follow him out, then fine. She should have just stopped in the car. Right? Got the proof. She had it on the video. You could see his car pull up behind her. And then you're seeing his car pull away. She had the proof there and there. And as I said, how did the police know that she was there in that car park? And in what car? Police wouldn't know what car she's in. Right? So someone had to phone the police, which they had, and told them where she was and what car she was in. And then just by chance, after the police pull away, a few minutes later, he pulls up behind her. Good one. You just told us who phoned the police. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Near the beginning of this case. Yeah, he did. He got out of his car to take a photo of his registration. So then, JLR got out of his car and said, What are you taking a photo of my registration for? Do you want to talk? We'll talk. No, he didn't want to talk. Oh, I believe, I really believe it was uh, his family, behind all this intimidation and threats towards other searchers, CJ, the YouTuber, CJ, whatever, and the um, narc divers, they both got threats. That's why they backed off the case. Right? But yes, Chloe should have the goods to get a PO and CP. Because I'm not, I'll tell you now, if someone made that threat to me, I'm a, and it was put on a live, put out there for everyone to hear. Right? No way I'd be go, well, you know what? Um, let him say what he wants. I'd be going, you know what? Fuck this. I'd be right on the phone to the police, 
wanting to put in a charge of threatening behaviour to, towards me, I'd be putting a uh, peer on him. Everything. Now, there's another date set for the... Oh. Is it the 29th? The 29th is tomorrow. A day set for tomorrow when Chris goes back to court to get his PO on Bullhorn Bay. And I think he'll get it. Unless Bullhorn Bay turns up. and If she did turn up at that court that day, right? And put her version, her story out there. Said, look, I didn't, I haven't been by them. I have not been anywhere near them. I haven't been out my car. Yes, I've drove up the road and passed their house, but I've not been out their car, out my car. I have not been on their property. I have not spoken to them. I haven't been anywhere near them. I don't think she could have had this order put on her, but because she wasn't at court. And her uh, attorney wasn't there either. The judge had no option, really, but to give it to them. CP jumped in front of a neighbour's car, Bobby, in their own neighbourhood. And yes, he did. See, everyone's forgetting about all this. You know what I mean? He's forgetting about his behaviour. All his threats he's issued. You know what I mean? But then they take one. YouTube it to court, and everyone's going, wow, she shouldn't have done it, she shouldn't have done that, she shouldn't have... No, she hasn't done anything wrong. In my eyes, I've never seen her do anything wrong. I'm not saying she's perfect. I'm not. There's something she does I don't agree with. There's something she says I don't agree with. But... There's so much CP has done, and his family have done, and if everyone who's been threatened just came forward now and said, look, I want to put a complaint in, oh, I've got a, I want to put a complaint in, oh, I want to put a complaint in, CP would not know where, wouldn't be able to stop his head from spinning, because there'd be so many complaints coming in towards him. Right. So, and it's like Seth has said, he's had people drive up past his house. He's been out on his porch having a smoke. And he's had people pull up outside his house, slow down, look at his house, then drive up the road, then come back again. He's not bothered by it. So why is Chris so bothered by it? And you can't say, oh, it's because I'm a private person. No, you're not, Chris. No, you're not. You're a piece of SHIT. But I don't trust... I If, if I had information and I lived there, I would not trust Sumner County. Right? I would not trust TBI. But I will trust the FBI. Now, we've been saying from at least a month in on this case, is there a reward? What? And there was a reward, but it was just promissory notes. And that isn't the best way. I went over this the other night when I talked in my life on why there was no reward set up. And I do say... The family shouldn't put any of their money into it, right? So, okay, we could say, well, why didn't Seth put some money towards the reward? But Seth needed that money. He still needs that money, right? Because he's not working. Because I don't know if he's gone back to work yet because he's narrowed his operation, so he should be able to go back to work. So we don't know. Perhaps he has gone back to work. Because he was due to go back to work, but then he signed off on the sick because of the shoulder injury he had. And then he had to go for that operation. Right? And 
But now, if he's able to ride his motorbike, he's able to go back to work. Unless he hasn't got a job no more. But I can't sack him because he's been off looking for his son. He gave a, a job reunion case then to fault because I can't sack him for that. But he should be back at work now. There is no searches going on. I really don't think there's any searches going on. He said they're all, seek, all doing it in private. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't think there is. Right. So, but this 50,000, you've got to admit this 50,000. Would you not be tempted if you knew something which could put, which could lead them to finding Sebastian or something? Would you not be tempted to go, I'm going, I, I'm like, in fact, if I knew something, I wouldn't tell anyone what I was going to do. I really wouldn't. I would just go ahead and do it. Right? If I had a car, I'd just be driving one day, phone them up and say, look, I've got some information, but I can't come to your office. Can we meet? And meet at a, a location far away from Hendersonville, maybe. Right? And give them the information. So, yeah. So, I'm wondering if there's any other neighbours that would know anything. Because if you watch that video that the mob crew done, how that car reversed, uh, apparently, this is just sub, sub, whatever, right? It's, we don't know if this happened or not. But say it did, and that car that they tried to fob us off with as a garbage truck, which we know wasn't, reversed out of the road as I was doing and ran the corner up onto Kelling Lane, Kelling Road, right? That, I wonder if that, ha I couldn't see any cameras on that house. I could see spotlights, like, sort of thing, but not cameras. But as I said, apparently there's also an audio that was going around. I've never heard this audio. I've heard about it, but never heard it. And the guy who he's been talking to, he won't give his ID up. He just put it this way, the guy he's talking to knows the area. Right? And he has said there's not many houses who've got ring doorbells. Right? And if they have, they're not in a position that can be seen from the road. They could be on the side of the wall. Yeah? By the front door. You've seen them houses, they've all got them little archway sort of things that go up towards the front door. Could be on the side. Be. Said, so, the mob crew guy turned around and said, that video, and he said, there isn't many of them about. And not, and hardly any close to CP's house. And as far as we know, there's one across the road, which caught Sebastian apparently putting the rubbish, a uh, garbage truck out, hang out. I'm surprised by that because they've got their perimeter set very high. Then, if he's picking up the other side of the road. I'm really surprised he's picking up that. But as he said, there isn't any within earshot apart from that one across the road. Right? So if there is footage of a conversation with Chris and Katie, it's either come from that house
Yes, I have, Karen. I've watched it. I've watched it. That's the one I'm on about. Yep. And that's what I'm saying. If they cut through them gardens, right, and between those two houses on Kelling Lane, and then got into the car because the car reversed back up onto Kelling Lane and then drove away. If that is what happened, and I think it's a high possibility, because the police really did not want us to know about that. That's why they kept saying it was a garbage truck. But you know what? The police have got to learn something. <laughs> you can't fool YouTubers. You can't. You can't. I backed off at first because Seth said it was a garbage truck. I thought, you know what? If Seth says it, I believe Seth. Right? And that's probably what they're hoping for. Yeah, that people would believe him and would back off. But some of them did believe Seth, but didn't back off. And did it their own work privately. And now the mob crew's come out with all this information. I was overlaid it all and everything. It's, it's done some really good work. Right? And... I now seriously think it was an abduction or a kidnapping. And you me did you hear that bit where you said, you remember when Nick Berry first put that into those light interview out? He said, then you see subject one standing there, then you see subject two making their way over to subject one. No, they haven't shown. They've showed Seth. The video, the part of the video where the um, garbage truck does come down, up and down the road. That's what they've shown Seth. Right? They have not shown Seth the bit that happened sort of like two or three hours before the garbage trucks got there. They haven't showed him that. Because they don't want us poking around. But as I said, when something is put out there, YouTubers will get on it and they don't care. And I must admit, I do think to myself sometimes when I've done a live, I'm thinking, hmm, have I just put some information out there that could ruin this investigation? But really, no, because a lot of the information I put out there, by the time I get to hear about it, there's been 10 other YouTubers already put information out there. You know what I mean? Because a lot of information comes through when I've gone to bed. Or fell asleep on my sofa. But that's when the information tends to come through, is when I'm in bed. Because like 10... When I get back at 11 p.m., okay, like 6, 6 p.m. there in the USA, it's between 5 and 6, between 5, 6 and 7 p.m. A 5 times 7 clip of that video at Seth saw, said, we were stuck, stuck the timestamp, so Seth dismissed it as a garbage truck. But the woman did say that the time on her camera, right, was out of sync, wasn't working properly. And the only the reason this woman, what she done, she, the owner of that home footage, she watched it and she managed to work out the times, rang about the times, because she knew what time the garbage truck come. And she knew what time the school bus came. Right? So she was watching that video. And she's seen the lights. And she's seen that car. And then she said, like, two, three hours later, the garbage truck come. Which would be around about 5.30, 5, 5.30-ish. 
Yes, that's when Seth. But yes, but that was after Seth saw it. Yeah, because the time she said it, the timing on her video was out of sync. It wasn't working right. She had to work it out by knowing well the garbage truck come between five and six, so she knew it was around about five o'clock then when the garbage truck come. Yeah, and she knew the school bus come about what quarter to seven. 7 a.m. So she knew when she saw the school bus come, she knew it was around about quarter to seven. So if she knew the garbage truck come at five and that car, and then she took off the two hours or so before, she knew then that that video, that car was there at three o'clock, three, three thirty. If the garbage truck came between five and five thirty, that car was there between three and three thirty. That's how she worked it out, and that's how she told that woman, the neighbour, who told us about it all. Seth has been too stubborn to revisit the video. Tabeline said, "Yes, I don't think. I think he needs to watch this video." He really does. He needs someone to go there and say, Right, you sit your ass down there and you, you, feck off, Tony. You sit your ass down there and you are going to watch this video. You need to see this, Seth. Because what the police are showing you is something that happened two, three hours later. They have not shown you the full video. And this is what happened between between three, three thirty, maybe four AM in the morning. Between three and four AM. Because that could give him hope, even more hope that Sebastian is alive. Because if he has been like I don't think it's uh someone coming and think, Well, we're just gonna kidnap this lag in this house because there's been no ransom. No ransom. This is a planned abduction by someone in that house. Right? And the only person that would know would be, oh, let's think, who's the last person? Who's the other person in that house? Who's the last one to see Sebastian? Who's the last one to speak? Oh, yeah, his mother, Katie. Right? So if this is a planned abduction or kidnapping, whatever you want to call it, Katie had something to do with this. Why? We don't know. Did she not want Sebastian going to his dad's? What, was she go what would be the idea of her doing this anyway? Because somewhere along the line, they're going to have to put Sebastian somewhere so he can be found and then be brought home. Sebastian, where you been for the last six months? In some hut somewhere or some bit? Do you know what? You know, you know what I mean? No one is going to keep someone for six months unless they're getting paid to, to do it. And I think, right, well, the mob crew putting this video out. I had forced, because he put the one video out first and he was looking at all the different types of cars that could fit in that light, the, that space of that car. And I don't think it is the same style car that the parents use. He picked up, he got another car and I'm not joking, this car fitted it perfect. Whoa. It's like, <gasps> oh yeah. That's the car. That is that car. That the front of the car, the back of the car, everything. And so he did that video, and the next day he did the one which you've just mentioned, and he overlapped everything and made a brilliant video with the little car moving. 
stopping at the stop light, then moving into Stafford Court, and then reversing back up onto Kelling, La- Kelling Road, and then drive. I thought that was brilliant. Mm, I don't know. So you think CP will go give him the code to get in the door and just take him? But what's that thug about then? Why has her story changed three times? The first time, he went to bed. All nice. Night, Mum, love you. Night, Pops, love you. Going to bed, no problem. Next time, she tells her, he went to bed at 9 o'clock. Love you, Mum. Love you, Pops. Goes to bed. But then at 10 o'clock, she heard a noise in his bedroom. And she shouted through, I don't know what you're doing in there, but you got to, you better get to sleep. Right? The next one. Night, Mum. Love you. Night, Pops. Love you. He goes to bed at nine. Then she heard this thud. Not a noise, a thud. And she shouts through, Is that you, Bubba, falling out of bed? No, Mum. I'm going to sleep now. So she made out that he was awake, he was fine at 10 o'clock by saying, and that was what the ex-FBI said as well. She changed the story three times. We're not the only ones to notice. She noticed it. All the YouTubers have noticed how she changed her story three times. And I even I said, after that first interview, I see when they did that first in- interview, the news network station i said you watch that interview they never mentioned his name once right never mentioned his name once you watch in the next interview they're gonna be talking yes sebastian is sebastian now and the story will change and it did and i'm thinking and then i said again you watch next time the story's going to change again and it did I thought, how many more times is this story going to change? Do you think he's unalive? You don't think he's alive? I'm hoping he's alive. The statistics will say different. Why? Statistically, the, st- the st- uh, statistics are more against him being alive. You know what I mean? But I have to have hope. As my son keeps saying, until they find a body to say one way or the other, if he's alive or unalive, then he will always state the child is alive. And that was from my son. And you don't say many clever things, well, wise things. Sometimes I feel like punching the shit out of him. <laughs> like the other day we was talking, and we was talking about the problems in the UK, and I mentioned two-tier policing. He said, what's that? I went, uh, where you been for the last 10 years or more? Because two-tier policing has been going on for years in the UK. Hi, I said, but now it's being highlighted more. He said, no, I haven't heard about that. Don't know nothing about two-tier policing. Get on YouTube, my son, and watch some of these YouTube videos. You'll see the difference. (laughs) And I felt like a, ooh, I'm punching these lights out. (laughs) But that's the difference. We can have a conversation where I don't always agree with him, and he don't agree with me. And I just agree to disagree. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I will say I'm wrong. You know what I mean? KP should demand to communicate with her son. KP should demand to communicate with her son after six months. There must be a, must be surveillance. Well, this is what I'm saying. Why is she not at the house? I 
I don't think they have been surveilling them. I'd be surprised if they've been watching them and watching their every move while they've been down whatever caravan park they are. You know what I mean? I would be very surprised. They haven't got the manpower. Right, unless FBI are doing it. Because why wouldn't she not be at home? She says it's because of the threat. No, there's no threat. No threats. You only won that case the other week, last week, because the uh, BHB didn't turn up and neither did her attorney. So the judge had nothing, no, no other choice but to give it to her. You know what I mean? I don't think I'll be surprised if BHB turns up tomorrow. She might do. She might still be down there. I don't know. I haven't seen no videos of hers come out lately. So, CP is preventing her from what? Leaving? Or, 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 or do you mean K, preventing KP? I don't know. It's hard. If he is, if he's got her song hidden somewhere, why? What would be the point of having someone hidden for so long? Because he just keeps saying, you wait and see what happens. You just wait and see what happens or something like that. He said it in an interview. Oh, God, that coffee is vile. You know, that coffee again. Yeah. Ugh. Right, um, sorry. <laughs> I just like my coffee and that is vile. So, I don't know, perhaps, you know, he didn't. If you remember, Karen, in an interview he did. And you know, I'm going to pull those interviews up again. And it was the interview, was it the first interview they ever did? Where it came in four parts. One, two, three, four. Right? But they played it as one. But on the internet, it came in four. He said he didn't expect it to go like it did. I will pull that interview up. I'll do a live again tomorrow night with that interview. Right? And because that one, that was the one that gave a lot of red flags straight away. And... Everyone, um, what's his name, Chris McDonough, he did a live with another guy who said we really need to see the first interview that tells us everything, right? Well, the very first interview they did was with the Duchess, right? Which was on the Sunday night, I believe, Saturday or Sunday night. And then on the Monday... They did the interview with the news reel, right? And um, I have gone through that first interview word by word of that first interview of the Duchess. I've got it written down, literally, word by word. Right. Let's see if I can pull it up. Right. The first interview. I haven't typed up the one yet with... Have I typed that one up? No, I haven't typed it up yet. Just this Is that the first one? Or... Yeah. Duchess. The first interview, and I've got it. I'm not joking, it took me weeks because I had to keep stopping and leaving it for a few days because his voice was getting to do me. I thought, I can't take his voice. I want to cut my throat. His voice was just doing me in. Right? 
And I've got that done. Word for word. Here. I'll take myself off the screen a bit. Oh, come on. There. Let's hold that. Right, there is word for word. Honest to God. And it's like they was very polite in this one. Because I just felt the Duchess, even though this was a brilliant interview, I just felt like she was pampering to them, which is fair enough. You want to get the information out of them, so you do what you have to do. Right? Right. right, it says here, because she doesn't, in this interview, actually mention the phone call. And it goes at work. So you were not at home, Chris. Correct, ma'am. M you, mum, you fell asleep on the couch about 10 p.m., but you said that Sebastian went to bed at 9 p.m. And then you got up off the couch and you went to bed and said, that was around midnight. And Duchess, and Katie replied and said midnight. And Duchess said, and nothing was unusual at that point. Everything seemed okay. But then Chris, oh, Chris has got to step in. And he goes, there's actually a piece of so To make something very crystal clear. That was his famous words, wasn't he? So there's that way there's no that there's transparency across the board. Me and he always referred to it as mum. And I said, I can understand like my husband would go to the kids, where's your mum? And they go, She's out in the garden, or she's upstairs, or she's just nipped up to the shops, right? But he wouldn't call me mum to my face, he called me by my name. So I can understand him going to Sebastian, where's your mum? Oh, she's in the bedroom. Oh, she's in the kitchen. She's wherever, in the garage. But when you're talking face to face, I wouldn't, I didn't expect him to call her, her mum. Right? And he goes, me and the mum were on the phone at 9.43 or 9.46 in the evening. We stayed on the phone for quite some time. The call logs have been verified by all the police department and that's TBI included. We stayed on the phone. It was very lengthy. Mum slightly started falling asleep while she, she was on the couch. I said, hey, you need to wake up. Started to fall asleep. Now, Seth said when she goes to sleep, she's a heavy sleeper. Right? And then he goes, put the dogs up and go to bed. But... In another interview he did with someone, which I haven't come across that one yet, but I will do, because I am going through all these interviews, I'm typing them up, even the ones Chris has done, don't worry. And it's, it is said that when Chris was not there, she would have the dogs in with her. So why is he telling, telling her to put the dogs up and go to bed? Why that night? Knowing that normally the dogs would be in with her, did he tell her to put the dogs up? Now, my, and then he goes, now mind you that, was right around midnight, just before midnight or right around midnight. So then mum goes to bed and wakes up early in the morning to go wake up her son and get him ready for school. And now we have a worried mum who can't find her son in the house. Mum made her an effort to look and search several times. Mum called me at Mum called me at yeah at the time and asked and she asked me. She was like, Why would she be asking him? That's another point. She was like, I can't find him. I was like Now I'm sure if I'd have phoned my husband up and said, I can't find him. 
my husband would have said, can't find who. Right? Can't find who. Because you've got dogs. I had cats. No, I had a dog. Now, if I could find my husband, I'd say, I can't find him. My husband would have gone, can't find him. And then I would have actually gone, I can't find Simon, or I can't find Denise, or I can't find the dog. Right? Can't, and, um, called me at the time and asked me. She said, I can't find him. I was like, do what? And she goes, yeah, I cannot find him. I said, well, go, well, hack. I said, well, hang on. I made the phone call and reported it to the sheriff's department because that's what we're supposed to do. Within 10 minutes, the sheriff's were dispatched to the location. Now, if you think of that, she phoned him. She said she phoned him by 10 past six. So they would have been there by one. 20 past six, half past six. They weren't there till what, 10 to seven. So, CP even said if someone has him, he doesn't, uh, if someone has him, he doesn't get away. Yeah, but I must admit, in that one interview, and I will continue typing up the transcripts for that interview, it does say, like, it, it didn't expect it to take off. So, not in that word, but he used other words. He did say he didn't expect it to take off like he did. So, perhaps I was just planning to hide him for a few days. Perhaps he was. They did think that he might be called to give evidence at that court case. They weren't sure. Perhaps he did. Because, why would he phone his ex-wife up? Why? Why would he phone his ex-wife up to tell him, tell her, Sebastian was missing? Why? It's got nothing to do with her. So why would you phone her up? Yep, he did, yes. He said that in that interview as well. And um, I'm, I, that's been booking me. Why would he phone his ex-wife up to tell him about Sebastian going missing? Because Sebastian isn't her son. She's got, no, she's got nothing to do with Sebastian. And then she goes, well, we've got caught on the, it, the 5th or something like that of March. And he turned around on the phone and said, I'm not sure if he said, I won't be there or we won't, or we won't be there. Right? And I'm thinking, how would he know he's not going to be there? Yeah. How would he know that he wouldn't be able to make that custody hearing on March the 5th? Because for all we know, we could have found, Sebastian could have been found. He went missing on the 26th, it could be found on the 27th, the 28th, the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, the 1st, the 2nd, the 3rd, the 4th. He could have been found any time before then. So I'm wondering, has he slipped up and said anything to her about anything? I'm not sure. Would she say something if he had? I don't know. I think she's still scared of him. She's still scared of him because she knows he could get custody. If she slips up, he could get custody. And that's what she's scared of. So, but I just can't understand why he would phone his ex up and tell him, tell her that Sebastian was missing. That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, See, so I've got to watch that interview. But it's been privated. That interview that Nina's done with um, Trev Time is privated. It? 
so why did you hang up he could have told you something sweetheart you could have had him locked up in prison so he hasn't told you anything Now, is he paying these people to look after Sebastian? If he's still alive, which we've got to believe he is. If he's been kidnapped, which I'm heading more towards now than anything else. I am heading that way. If he's been kidnapped, they'd have to pay him. They're not going to keep this child for six months and more right, without being paid. I'm not going to do it. So. So, I don't know. What does anyone else who's sitting in the bushes feel? Have you got an opinion on this? Do you think Chris has done something? Do you? Has anyone ever watched that film, Ransom? With a uh, blah, 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 God, what's his name? I hate my memory because it does my head in. <laughs> it's a brilliant film. And at the end, the father turns this Ransom money around and says, right, instead of giving it to you, I'm giving this money to anyone who can give me information on my son. And there's one, there was three other people involved and a detective involved in this kidnapping. One of them got shocked when he went to hang the money over near the beginning. So that left two others and this detective. She feels guilty, but CP was beating around the bush and she didn't, doesn't trust him. She doesn't trust him, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, one is a stepsister, yeah. Maybe she needs $50,000. Yeah. As I said, money talks. This is what we've been waiting for for six months. We've been waiting for this. Someone is going to talk. That is a lot of money. But you see, they may not get the money. Because if they do talk, they could be dropping themselves, innit? Because they could say, well, if you knew this, why didn't you come forward? And all this time, you had this information, you said nothing. So they could have them on charges. <laughs> and they wouldn't get a penny. But it is a lot of money. One is a stepsister. So she's got no allegiance to him, really. He's got a, bro a stepbrother, hasn't he? No. I did hear something about that. But I thought, nah. I put, I'll just put it along with the, under the BS file. Right, and um, I thought, this is just getting ridiculous now. You've got everyone coming out and saying this and that. But we're going to have a lot of people coming out now and saying certain things. So you got, we just got to be careful what they're saying. And as before we put it out there. Because it could be something that is true. And I would say to anyone... Who's listening? If you're watching on replay and you know anything, anyone knows anything, don't tell us. Tell the FBI. First time I said this. Yeah, no, but I heard it a while ago, but I just put under the BS file because at the time there was a well, it's been going on for a while. I know the BS has been going on for a while. 
and I just felt Sebastian was being forgotten then. Every time any BS come out, it's like Sebastian got pushed to the back and all his YouTubers were on the keypad uh, typing away and chatting away and saying this and saying that. I'm thinking, this has got nothing to do with Sebastian. We can talk about this, all this BS, after we find Sebastian. After we find Sebastian and we get him home, Seth can then go, I want to put uh, press charges against child services. I want to know why they didn't tell me about all this that was going on in the home. He can go on to that. All us YouTubers can have fun day then with all that. And all this other BS that's been coming out. Leave it at the front door. And let's concentrate on finding Sebastian or getting Sebastian home. Even if it means going over old interviews, talking about it again. Just keep his name out there, keep his picture out there and keep talking about this lag. Because this is why we're all here for. This lag up in the corner. That is who we're here for. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be sitting here talking tonight about this. We'd be talking about something else, maybe, but not about him. So is there anyone out? I know we've got some sitting in the hedges, in the bushes. I'm going to say hello. But no. So you've got the half-sister. You, they, the sister definitely knows something. And I still think they've got some connection with the police. Because there's things that Chris has come out with, I'm thinking, hmm, how would you know that? You know what I mean? Oh, I can understand what you said. Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to criticize you. Yeah, it's a good way for her to get back at him. Definitely is. You think of all the therapies she's having, to, she's had to go to through or having to go through. That's not cheap. Do they? So I don't get to see a lot of her. I've watched a couple of his, and I'm too busy trying to do other stuff. I'm not getting to watch a lot of my channels. That's why certain days I don't go live because I'm watching other YouTubers. And in the day, if I'm not going to go live on the night, it means I've got all day I can sit there and just zombie out on the sofa watching all these YouTubers and what they're saying. Because I know I haven't got to do no research. I haven't got to look up on anything. Um... I'm got to do no fact checking, fact checking, fact checking, nothing. Because I'm not, I know I'm not going to be on live on the night time. And Chris McDonough's done a few good ones about this case. He's good anyway. Right. Melissa told CP to back over me. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. And wasn't Katie there that day as well when that happened? I think Katie was there as well that day. As I said, Katie knows what CP is and his family are capable of. But I can't understand why she would move away from the home. You want to stay at home. I don't care if I had 10, 20, 30 people driving past my home. I'll give them a wave going, hello, bye, up yours. You know what I mean? I wouldn't care. Because if you're innocent, that is all that matters. You're innocent. You don't care about what anyone else says. You don't. Because like Chris says, the truth will come out in the end. And I will find that interview out and we'll over go over that. Because that is 
that's the first interview I ever saw. I didn't see the first one with the Duchess that I've got written up here. Look, it took me. I'm not joking. It took me how many pages? I'm not going to know, oh God. No, there's something wrong there. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that was it. That was 19 pages. But the second one, I think the second one they did was longer. Because the second one, we had to wait over an hour before Chris come on. Over an hour. And, yeah, let's see how many pages this is. Come on. Oh. You know what, and let's see if I can screen it. Yeah, because Chris come into the interview after Lee, she spoke about this. Uh, so I'll zoom and oh God, come on. I like this thing, it does this because it takes forever for me to get down anywhere. See, I've been going through them and highlighting certain parts of the interviews that I thought would be of interest to talk about. Oh, yeah, what page is this? That 40, 49 pages this was. I'm thinking, really? Right, so... Uh, so Kathy wasn't there. I thought she was. My fault. I know she was there at one of the hangovers when Nina went to see, have the little girl for a few hours. Half an hour or an hour. Uh, visiting watch, remember? I know, I'm sure she said Kathy, Katie was there that day when she had to hang over, when she took the black baby off her and then she had to hand it back to Katie. Katie put her in the car and drove off. Unless it was Kathy, she said, I'm not sure. I'm sure she said Katie. But, you know, that, I've literally, my, my brain was frazzled. I haven't done no transcripts for a while because I needed a break. I needed a break from hearing his voice. Uh, but, as I keep saying, $50,000. Big money. FBI, I'm not messing about no more. They are talking big money here. No other time before that, it was uh, when when she had just visiting, where she could just see a little girl once a week, I think, for half an hour or an hour for that time. And I'm sure she said Kathy turned up with her one day with her. I know she was at the airport. And she got her back then, didn't she, before they got on the plane? You see, you've got here, you've got Kathy B, Terry B, and sisters, and Kathy's brother, Danny. How loyal is Danny to Kathy, his sister? How loyal is Danny to Chris, his nephew? There's a lot of people involved in this. There's at least three people possibly in that car. There had to be a driver 
and then there's two of because remember on those lights that was it i was going to say remember with those lights so they're talking about those lights nick berry said and then after that number subject number two met up in number one and they both disappeared yeah and then subject number one come back yeah no that one there this is uh, Nick Bells has put it as well. That's, this is naughty of Nick. That one where the light was coming, where he said was coming back towards the house, that was the first part of that video. So that was someone going up towards the house. Yep. That's why the light was very, very uh, dim. Because... It was in whatever the light source was, it was in front of that person. Right? That very dim light source come back to the house. Then, then you see that subject two coming from the house towards subject one. So that the way Nick put it, he said, you got subject one, subject two coming from here up to subject one. And then you got subject one coming, uh, subject two, then coming back towards the house. No, no. If you look at it this way, two people get out of that car when it was parked. Oh, God. When that car pulled up at that stop sign, two people get out. They walk across the road, well, round the corner, right, up onto the grass bank and the garden area. One stands round by that uh, sun house, whatever it is, right, one stands there and one goes up to the house. And that's that dim light that we're seeing at the end, what Nick said was Subject number two, going back to the house. No, that was subject number two, yeah, because you got subject one and subject two, and that was subject number two going to the house, right? Then you got subject number two coming back from the house over towards subject one, and then sub subject one disappears, remember? And we thought he'd just gone out of camera range. No, I think he did cut between that house on the corner and the other house. And they cut between there. Miss what's Miss Southern Sweet Tea, if she's on disability, it's for mental illness. Who's on disability? Right. So I think they went behind that. That corner, that house on the corner, they went between those two houses there, and that's why those lights. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Someone's got a disability. <laughs> We'd like to know who. <laughs> I've got a disability. Oh, talking about Bull on Betty. <laughs> oh, disability. Oh, she's got. She's got a disability, I say. Didn't know that. That will on be. For his for mental illness. <laughs> she's got some bones. I'll tell you something. She's got some bones. You know what I mean? To go out there the day after she's got released from prison. We're talking about Sebastian. Right? And then to do a protest outside the police station. And then, it's just the way she come up to the camera at the end and said, and she said what she had to say, and then she said, now, Sonia County, come and arrest me. And she's right outside the police station. <laughs> I'm thinking, why haven't I arrested her? Oh, right. I didn't know. She, never heard of anything. But I know she don't work, so she could be on disability. Disability. She's got to be on something if she's not working. See, over here in the UK, we can get disability and still go to work. Yeah, she has for CP. 
but I sang, I'm not sure if she'll go. You know what I mean? She should go. She should go. I think she should go and put her case forward. She may not win, but she should still go. I'd be fighting my, I'd be fighting my fucking backside off against them little twats. No way I would let them win over me. So she should go. So anyway, getting back to the lot. So I think they did go between the house on the corner, which is 1011, I believe, and the other house up on Kelling Lane. Kelling Road, and that's where the car reversed round the corner up to there, and then they've got into the car and drove off. So, but who is he? It's nice to have you on here, Southern Sweet Tea. What is what is Sweet Tea in America? Can someone tell me? Because. I hear so many people talking about it, and I think, that sounds really nice. I'm not a tea drinker. So, she better go, her members can't afford to go court fees. <laughs> no, they can't. They can't. It's iced tea with sugar. Okay. Does it have to be a lot of sugar, or just a little bit of sugar, or... Whatever you feel like having in. Because I, I've had iced tea here, but we have it with lemon, sliced lemon. Right? And I had that once down in Southport in, in the UK. And I thought, I'll try it. Right? I said, but can you make the tea strongish? Don't make it weakish. I want it strongish. And they did make it strong. Lots of shit. Oh, God. <laughs> that, sweet tea to me, any tea with one sugar in is sweet for me. My mum, well, she had this saying. I could never understand what she'd say. She only liked one sugar in her cup of tea. So if anyone put made her a cup of tea and put two sugars in, she go, ugh, that's like poison. Right? And I go, Mom, you're being a bit dramatic. Right? No. If I have a cup of tea, it's got to be a strong cup of tea, and it has just one sugar, just like not even one spoon of sugar, like half a spoon of sugar in. And if anyone, I remember someone made me a cup of tea with two sugars in. And I went, and as soon as I said it, I went, oh, my God, that was my mum. Because I went, oh, my God, that's like poison. And I looked at me and said, oh, sugar, sorry, that's something my mum used to say. And now I could understand why she said it. Because it's so horrible to have too much sugar in tea. So I probably just put one sugar in. But I'd probably do it with my, I'd probably do it the way I like it, with the lemon. Some sliced real lemon, not lemon juice, not lemon, not this gelatin lemon. It's got to be real lemon. Miss my mum, she was so funny. Yeah, my mum come out with some crazy things, honest. Really. She sadly passed away in 2019. So, but I do miss that. At the end, she was a nasty, my mum was a nasty piece of work. <laughs> right? She'd be in the hospital, she was in the hospital, at, right, once. And she was going to my, my brother. That guy over there, or that woman over there, she's going to kill me. And my brother's going, Mum, behave. She's going to kill me. Mum, behave. She's not, and this woman was incapable of getting out of the bed on her own, right? And my brother said, Mom, this woman can't get out of the bed. 
She's not going to kill you. She's across the other side of the ward. She can't get to you. And then there was a guy when there was my my sister and her husband was there. And my brother was there with his wife. The whole family was there by me because I was up in Scotland. And my sister, my one sister, was standing outside the ward. Like you got these like little side rooms, uh, side walks, where you'd have something like six beds in there. But you could see them outside because there's a glass, there's a glass wall, right? Glass, a window. My mum was sitting there going, see them two out there pointing at my sister and her husband. And Mark go, yeah, I see Kath and Mark. They're chickens. They're effing chickens. I swear to God, my mum was not supposed to come out of that hospital till the Monday, right? Where did you find that video of Melissa saying that about CB? What video? What video is that something to speak to? I know Nina said something about CP, but I've never seen any video of Melissa. No, my mum was a nut pot. They kicked her out of the hospital, they sent her home early on the Friday, and they shouldn't have the sugar kept her in until the Monday. But because they sent her home from the home hospital early, because of her behaviour, right, my mum sadly passed away on the Sunday at home. Where she said, wrong. oh, right, it's on the interview that Nina gave, right? Nina did an interview with Trev Time. Now he's privated that interview. So unless you've downloaded that interview, you can't get to it. And, um, but JLR has got it on his page. And you can listen to it on his page. And it says where she took the, she got the two, she had the two kids in the car, right? And she got the little baby and she's putting the baby in the car seat. And as she's dropping the baby into the car seat, Melissa shouted over, he's gone, oh no, um, Chris gone towards the car, the driver's side. And he's going to get in the car. And Melissa's shouting, go on, Chris, run her over now, run her over. Right? So he started to put the car in reverse. So she's shouting at the other two kids to jump, unbuckle themselves and get out of the car, just jump out of the car. So they did. She's managed to get the little one out of the car and jump out of the way of the car. She then went in back inside to the police station, right? The police wasn't going to help her. So she's got her attorney who then spoke to the police and said, you make sure that she gets in that car with those kids safely and drives away safely. Because the police wasn't going to help her. Because that was all for Chris and his family. But the interview is on Trev. To um, if you go on JLR and punch in interview with Nina, it will come up. Right? But it's on there. And you need to listen to it if you haven't listened to it all. It's heartbreaking. And you know, it's, she's not putting this on. It was real heartbreaking. So if she knew something, I, I swear to God, she'd drop them in it. She'd drop them in it without the money. She would drop them to writing it. If she knew something about this case. Yeah, it's on there. So if she knew anything about this case, she would drop whoever it was involved in it without hesitation. Not even She wouldn't even want the money. She had done it months ago. Unless she's just found something out now. Like sometimes you don't necessarily find something out about a case straight away. She may have heard something now in the, like, the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So... I don't trust 
Chris. I don't trust his family. And I think Kate is just scared of Chris because she knows what his, him and his family are capable of. And if she's brought any harm to her son because of CP, then I hope she gets the full part of the law. I hope I don't want to think she has. I hope she hasn't. I hope, like you say, that perhaps CP did arrange this because it does look like an uh, an abduction. If you watch that video from the mob crew, it definitely does. And I think. I can't praise him for the work he's done. He's, he's done a brilliant piece of work, that's what I'm saying. But let's see now, over the next couple of weeks, who's going to talk? Who needs $50,000? Well, I'm going to leave it at that because I wasn't going to be on this long. Right, so I'm going to leave it there and let's just think about it. Would you, if you knew something about a case? Yes, she does have a black belt in martial arts. I know, I know some Aikido. I used to do Aikido. Yeah. And my kids did it, and my husband done it. Right, and they could never get me to, like, when we were using the weapons, we had wooden weapons, not the real things, just wooden ones. And I remember once, they also say, when you bring the weapon down to hit someone on the head, you don't stop, you follow through. If you hit someone on the head with that stick, it's their own fault for not moving out the way or blocking you, right? But when I was working with my husband once, I could never, I always used to stop. And he knew I'd stop. Right? Oh, no, I wasn't working with my husband once. I was working with one of these other guys. That was it. I was working. And I always used to stop before the wooden weapon would hit him, touch him. Right? You know what they said to me? I know this is sad. This is sad. They just said, think of Vince. That was my husband. And I swear to God. Whenever I got that weapon in my hand and I came to bring it down, I just used to think of having Vince, my husband, standing there. And it worked every time because I followed through, which meant the person whose head it was he heading towards had to move because they knew I wasn't going to stop. So they did move. Right? Or they blocked me with their weapon. And my husband would tell me, I'd say, that's nice, isn't it? You won't do it on anyone else, but as soon as they think it's me, as soon as you think it's my head you're hitting, you'll follow through. But yeah, I did martial arts, I did uh, Aikido. I didn't go for the bouts. I didn't do it for that. I did it for exercise. I could have got, I think we stopped. We started doing it because my kids were doing it and we was watching and we thought, you know what, we might as well join in. So we started joining in with them. But yeah, she's black belt in martial arts. So, I put it this way. They make a perfect pair. Because if she ha if she does know something about this case, what I can't understand. What, if she knows about, say he has been kidnapped, right? And using, they've got him in hiding somewhere, right? The possibilities of he have a, having her son when he comes back home she, I'll tell you something. This is all BS. I don't know what BHB did to make her think she was in fear of her because on that video, I didn't see nothing. I don't know if she done done anything off camera. I don't know. Perhaps she did. I don't know. But I do know while on camera, she didn't do nothing. 
So, well, it's just, it's just silliness now, and this is getting out of hand. You've got, like, Seth giving cease and desist to a lot of YouTubers who are out there looking, right? And just because they've said something he didn't like, or whatever, he's sent out cease and desist. You've got Katie, Chris, his mum, and his stepdad putting protection orders out against BHB. It's ridiculous. It shouldn't be doing this. If if Seth just forgot about all these people saying and doing what they're saying and doing what they're doing and just concentrate on looking for his son. And if Katie and Chris just put one iota of an effort in to look for Sebastian instead of going after uh, YouTubers, right? If they put that much effort that they're putting into going after YouTubers, if they put that much effort into looking for their son, right, they'll probably find him. But someone did say, right, Seth's out there looking, yeah? He's been out there looking from day one. And someone said from day one, you don't look for something you haven't lost. In Seth's eyes, he's lost his son. He can't find his son, so he, he was out there looking. Why was Katie not out there looking? Okay, law enforcement did say not to go looking while the search was going on. Well, the search ended after eight days, so why didn't Katie go out looking? Then, or even Chris, didn't need two of them to go out looking. One of them could have gone out looking. One could have stayed at home. One could have gone out looking. But I uh, said, you don't look for something you haven't lost. Meaning, they know where he is. Whether he's alive, I don't know. I don't know. I hope, I'd like to hope and pray he is. Yes, indeed, yes. Why wait so long to get these POs? Right? It's all... It's ridiculous. They're not doing themselves any favours by doing what they've done. Because now there's going to be a lot of YouTubers thinking, hmm, could they do the same to me? Like Terry Lynn, she's out there searching. Right? Could they do the same to her? I noticed she just literally done a 12 hour live. I think, oh my lord, a 12 hour live. I can't watch that. I can't watch that, Terry Lynn. It's too long. 12 hours. Right, but I think she was out searching as well. She's she's been doing it week weekly, nightly, whenever she can since Sebastian been missing. She's had her tires slashed. She's had her, ex, you know what I mean, issue towards her, but she's not letting them get to her. It's not stopping her. Anyway. So let's just think on that when I'm when we're not here. Let's just think about who do, who do you think would come out and talk? Do you think it would be one of the neighbours? Do you think it'll be one of the relatives? Do you think it would be Tony? Right? Who? So anyway, I'm gonna leave it there. She was very sick, then went to Vegas. Who was very sick? Katie. Sick in the head. Yeah, I believe that. It's Katie. Was it Katie? Because I heard she went away somewhere. I did hear that a few weeks. Terry. Okay. I heard um something about... Katie had gone away somewhere, oh, a while back now. This was before the summer holidays. 
she couldn't go join us on holidays because she's looking after his daughter. Well, he's hard at work every day. Now, would you have people force you out of your home, a nice home they've got, to go and live in a five-wheeler? No. Well, I hope Terry's okay. Because so, I know she's been putting a lot of effort into finding, into these searches. And all good for her. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to go. I think CP is working in Louisiana. Yeah, I don't think he's working in his old place. I think I got rid of him there. So, Louisiana. Anyway, I'm going to leave you all and love you all. Thank you all for being here. Even those in the bushes. So thank you all again for being here. I had a great chat. It's good seeing you, Karen. I haven't seen you for a while, but it's good seeing you. Yes, we've got them sitting in the bushes. <laughs> That's okay. I do that a lot. All the time on other YouTube channels. Don't worry, I sit in the bushes. I sit there. I see what's being said. Yep. Occasionally, I might throw a comment in. Occasionally. Especially if I catch them on a live, then I can throw in a comment. If I don't, I think I never get a live. I always miss a lot of them because of the time difference. Anyway, I'm going to go because it is being on here two hours and ten minutes now. So I'm going to go. I'm going to say good night to you all. Thank you all for being here. Before I go, please give this video a like. I would really appreciate it. If you haven't already, Please subscribe, then go and click on all. That way you'll be notified of all my videos I put out and all the lives I do. And come and join in on the live chat. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Do we have a Labor Day? I don't think we have a Labor Day here. <laughs> I don't think we have a Labor Day. I think we've got... Uh, the UK, England's got a bank holiday tomorrow, but Scotland don't. You see, Scotland don't have that bank holiday. So, and we don't have a, a Labour Day weekend. <laughs> God, we don't have very much no more because our Prime Minister's stopping everything. Anyway, I'm going to go. I've got to go. I've got to, I've got to go. Really. So thank you all. So again, before you go, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe if you haven't. That way you'll be kept up with all future videos and lives. And I'll see you all hopefully tomorrow. Don't know what I'm talking about yet. I'll see what I feel like in the morning. So until then, thank you all again. And I'll see you tomorrow.